In this video, we are focusing on one of the factors that affects the solubility of gases, and that factor is pressure. According to Henry's Law, which is also known as um, um, the Pressure Concentration Law, Henry's Law states that the solubility of a gas in a liquid is proportional to the pressure of the gas over the solution. So as I mentioned, Henry's Law is also known as a concentration uh, uh, pressure law and it states that the concentration is proportional to the applied pressure of the gas above the liquid. We can replace that proportional symbol with a proportionality constant. We're going to go through what each of these variables mean. C represents the molar concentration of the gas that's dissolved. And from what we learned in the solution sections of this chapter, mol molar concentration is moles over liters of solution. Pressure is the pressure of the gas over the solution and we want it in ATM. If you can recall from our chapter 10 lecture in Chem 110, in one ATM there is 760 millimeters of mercury and 760 torr. Lastly, K is known as the constant, Henry's Law constant, and this is given to you. It is dependent on the type of solvent and the type of solute, as well as the temperature. That's why the units are going to be the concentration times atmospheric pressure. In general, according to Henry's law, as the pressure of the gas over the solution increases, more gas molecules are going to strike the surface, increasing the number of gas molecules dissolved in the liquid. If we look up above, I've created a visual here showing an example of what's happening and what represents Henry's law. So in this first figure here, I have a solution in a closed container with a piston. In this solution, you have an equilibrium or a balance between the rate of dissolving, the amount of solute particles going into the solution, and the rate of evaporation. There's a balance between the number of solute particles and solvent particles that are in the vapor phase with the solute particles and the solution phase, which is why you have an um, arrow going up and an arrow going down. There's a balance. As I go ahead and uh, apply the piston, I have a pressure that's applied. And what's going to happen is that this is going to increase the amount of particles going more into the solution phase. There's going to be more dissolving than more evaporating because of the increase in pressure. With the increase in pressure, there's less room for there to have an existence of vapor particles. So hence, more is going into the dissolved phase, represented by the darker blue arrow. As time passes, with this new rate of dissolving, the rate of vaporization also becomes equal to the rate of dissolving. That balance is reestablished at the new pressure. So that's what Henry's law shows, is that as the applied pressure increases, the more gas molecules are going to dissolve 
into the aqueous phase. So how are we going to apply Henry's law to solving some solution problems? If we look at these problem types below, this is referring to the problem types that are in prob uh, that are in chapter 13 of your workbook. So in this first problem, we want to calculate the molar concentration of oxygen at 25 degrees Celsius. We have the partial pressure of oxygen, and we're given K, which is the Henry's Law constant for oxygen. Okay, so let's go ahead and list our equation. Concentration is going to equal Henry's Law constant times the applied pressure. We want to solve for the concentration. We know what Henry's Law constant is. Henry's Law constant is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liters times ATM. And we're going to multiply that by the pressure, which is 0.22 ATM. Therefore, the concentration of the oxygen is 2.9 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. In the second problem, our gas is carbon monoxide. We're given K and the temperature. We want to find the concentration given that we're given our pressure, but this time it's in millimeters of mercury. So we need to convert that 0 0.015 millimeters of mercury to ATM. Now we know that there's 760 millimeters of mercury per one ATM, and this ends up equaling 2.0 times 10 to the negative 5 ATM. So now we can solve for by concentration by taking Henry's Law constant and multiplying it by the pressure. So this concentration ends up being 1.9 times 10 to the negative 8 molar. In our last example for Henry's Law, we're looking at carbon dioxide. And what we're given is the concentration is 0.12, and we're given the temperature. We need to know the pressure that is going to be needed to keep that carbon dioxide in our club soda. So if you look in your textbook, we're given the K of CO2. And this is 3.4 times 10 to negative 2 molar times ATM. So we can go ahead and plug in what's given. We have 0.12 molar, and our Henry's Law constant is 3.4 times 10 to the negative 2 molar per ATM. And we're going to multiply that by the pressure which we need to solve. If you manipulate this, you can solve for pressure, and that ends up being 3.5 ATM. I did want to mention that there's been corrections up above that I've corrected the units here for Henry's Law constant. It should be molar per ATM as well as for number two that should be molar per ATM. I originally had it as molar times ATM. So make sure that's corrected and there's also error up here that should also be molar per ATM which I'm going to change so that should be molar per ATM for Henry's law constant